Okay, um, we have spent the past several videos now working with Taylor series and binomial expansions and we have a formula that depends upon whether the exponent in our binomial expansion is a positive number or whether it's a negative number and both of them form a pattern that makes it pretty straightforward to remember the formulas. Here we have a plus x to the positive n where the first binomial coefficient that we encounter well here is just times a to the n and this is the coefficient is just one we write it as the binomial coefficient n over zero just in keeping with the pattern and of course that binomial coefficient is equal to one and this is times x to the zero which is just one so we don't bother writing it in then the next term well throughout the series the upper part of the binomial coefficient stays the same and the bottom part increases by one for each successive term and likewise the exponent of x continues to increase by one as we go through each successive term while the exponent of a decreases by one as we go through each successive term and the final term in the expression will then be x to the n and again its um, its coefficient is just one but we write it as the binomial coefficient n over n so that we don't break the pattern but now this is um, it's a finite sequence when n is a uh, positive exponent now when it's a negative exponent for a plus x the terms will have alternating minus and plus signs and it's not a finite sequence this is now an infinite sequence but again the pattern is pretty straightforward to remember here the first coefficient is the binomial coefficient of n over n minus 1 over n minus 1 and now as we go throughout the series the bottom part of the binomial coefficient stays the same and the top part of the binomial coefficient continues to increase by one. Now here x, we can say that this is times x to the zero which is just one and then as we go through all for each successive term the exponent of x continues to increase by one just as this increases by one for each term. Meanwhile, just as this, it just as was the case up here this exponent of the a term continues to decrease by one as we go throughout the series. Here it'd be minus, here it'd be minus n minus one, so we take the minus sign out and write as n plus one. Same thing here and for the rest of the terms as well. So in keeping with the pattern, the next term in this infinite series would be minus n plus two this stays the same and now we have a to the minus n plus 3 x cubed the next term would be n plus 3 this stays the same a to the minus n plus 4 times x to the fourth then the next term is a negative term and that pattern just keeps on repeating so again these are pretty simple to remember once we think of the pattern that's involved now the reason why we went through other trouble to develop this background is this is very useful when we're going to be dealing with generating functions and we'll deal with ordinary generating functions and as well as exponential generating functions both of those are very powerful tools to help us deal with the more complicated combination and permutation problems and to give you an idea of the types of problems that we'll encounter or how we're going to use this information suppose we have this problem 
say we have 1 minus 2 times x to the minus 7th. And we want to, say, find the coefficient of, say, x to the fifth. First, here we don't, and in many, when we deal with generating functions, many times this would just be a 1 here. So if we have, say, 1 minus x to the minus n, what would be the general formula? So here for the first term, a is just 1 minus, and since a is just 1, now we have x. In fact, this is a minus sign though, so all the terms will be positive. If this was a minus x, we would not have alternating plus and minus terms. All the terms would then be positive. So we can just continue along. And here, this increases by 1, from n minus 1 to n. So for the next term, and discontinues along in that pattern. So when we get to x to the fifth, it's going to be n. This is 2, and this is 1. This number is always 1 less than this number, so it's going to be n plus 4 over n minus 1. Let's bring this into focus here. This is the fifth term in the series here. And here for the exponent here, this number, the n plus number, is always one less than this number. And of course, this stays the same. So for this problem, n is equal to 7. We already have the minus sign here. So n is equal to 7. So here then, the coefficient for this term here, and all the terms are positive now, so we'll have 2 to the fifth power, that's 32, then we have n plus 4, n is 7, so we're going to have the binomial coefficient 11, 7 minus 1 is 6, times of course x to the fifth. And let's see, what would that give us? Here we have 32 times, this would be 11 factorial divided by 6 factorial times 5 factorial. So let's see, this would be equal to 11 times 10 times 6, and we can just, it's going to decrease, of course, all the way to 1. At this point, we can just say times 6 factorial divided by 6 factorial times 5 factorial. And this is multiplied by 32. And let's see, this goes into here two times. This will go into 8 two times. These, of course, cancel out. These two, those two cancel. And this goes into 9 three times. So it looks like we have here 2 times 3 is 6 times 7 is 42 times 11. So in here we have 32. So you have 32 times 11 times 42. And if you put that on the calculator, I think it comes out to this. So the coefficient for x to the fifth 
for this expansion here would be 14,784. And this might seem um, just like a, a trivial example, perhaps, of um, how we use the binomial expansion when we have a negative exponent. But actually, when we get to the more complicated permutation and combination problems, we're going to use this procedure a lot. So we just want to take a, a minute or so and introduce it now, because we're going to be using this very much in the future videos. We try to tackle some of the more complicated um, permutation and combination problems. Anyway, that's it for this video. Come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll try and work some more problems.